Welcome to Children's Church. It is so good to see you here this morning. And I'm looking forward to looking at God's Word and what God's Word has to tell us. Let's remember what we have learned about so far. In lesson one, we learned about the Word of God. We learned that the Word of God is perfect and true, and that if we obey it, if we believe it, and we use it as our foundation, it will change our lives. And then next, we learn about the attributes of God or the special characteristics of God. We use some words to describe who God is. And we put it all together into one word. And it was the word incomprehensible. Now let me remind you what that word means. It means that we cannot completely figure out God, but we'll always have something more to learn about him that we do not know. But I'm thankful that God gives us his word to help us to understand who he is and what we need to know. Where well, we're going to talk more about that today, but before we begin talking about that, as I begin this lesson, I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever wondered about where the world came from or how it came to be? Now, a lot of people have ideas about that question. And one of the most popular ideas that's being taught today is called the Big Bang Theory. Now, many of you have heard of this idea, but just in case, let me give you just a quick definition. The Big Bang is the, just the idea that billions of years ago, that there was this huge explosion in space and all the parts and pieces from that explosion came together to form the world. Now, we're actually going to try that. Now don't worry, I'm not gonna do a real explosion, but I have here, there's a small box of Legos. And what I'm gonna try and do is create something by an explosion. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump it out on the table and see what it actually makes. So I'm gonna shake the box up for a few seconds and I'm gonna dump it on the table and we're gonna see what happens. So let me ask you a question. What did we build? What was it supposed to be? Nothing got created. Nothing got created, just jumbled pieces all together. But let me show you something. Let me show you something that I made. Where do you think this came from? Did it just appear? Was there an explosion? Now, obviously, it didn't just appear all by itself. This was actually made, but someone had to build it, right? Someone had to build this. Here's what I want to say. When we look at creation, when we look at creation today, all around us, even at this little car that I was able to build with some blocks, you know someone had to have made it. Someone had to have made it. It couldn't have just appeared or put itself together after an explosion. But many people believe that the Big Bang started the world. And so where can we find the truth about how the world was made? We have the Word of God with us. We have the Bible with us that tells us how the world was made. So I want to read, start out by reading one verse to you. And today we're going to talk about what the Bible says about the beginning of the world and who was there. And so I want to take you to the first verse of the first chapter of the first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter one and verse one tells us, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Those first four words, in the beginning, God. Who was there in the beginning? God. He was the only one who was there because though nothing else had ever been created at this point. And this was at the beginning of time as we know it. In the beginning, God 
It was God who was there. And this is what started, and this is what God started to create the universe by the power of his hands. By the power of his hands. Only God was there. God is, God always was, and God always will be. Because only God is eternal. Now we learned about that last week. We learned about that last week. God has always existed and he always will be. That is what eternal means. And when we see the words in the beginning, God, we can know that God has always been there even before the world began. Now I want to read some more verses to you. In the book of Exodus, the second book of the Bible, chapter three, God is going to talk to a man named Moses. You see, Moses had run away from home, but now God is calling him back for a very special task. But you see, Moses was afraid and he wasn't feeling so sure about himself. Listen to what they say in their conversation. In verses 13 and 14, we see Moses asking a question, asking a question, behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I tell them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. You see the question Moses asked? Moses asked God a question. What is your name? And God's answer was very simple. I am that I am. God says his name is I am. And when God told Moses this, he was saying that he is the one that who is and always will be. God himself is telling Moses that he is eternal. God is the only eternal one. He is the only eternal one. Remember Genesis 1.1. God was in the beginning. He is the great I am. Now something or someone had to have been there or anything before anything else came to be. There had to be something who never had a beginning. Someone who commanded everything to be. Guess who that someone was? That someone was God. The one and only true God. He is the God of of creation, the God of Moses, and he is the same God for us today, and he will always be the same God forever. He is the only eternal God. Now, there's one more verse that I want to read to you. It's in the New Testament, in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 20. The Bible tells us, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. This verse tells us since the creation of the world, something about God has been clearly seen. Let me tell you what those things are. They're called the invisible things of God. Now, what are the invisible things you may ask? There are all the attributes that we have talked about, the attributes that we talked about last week, his, etern his eternity, his omnipotence. These are some of God's invisible attributes. Now, we don't see them, of course, because we don't see God, but we know God exists, and these attributes describe him because of what the Bible tells us. Do you know what helps us to see God's eternal power? Creation. Creation reminds us of God's power. What do you think about some things in creation that helps us to see how powerful God is? Think about oceans. You think about storms. You think about lightning. You think about tornadoes. You think about hurricanes. You think about rainbows and even mountains. And these are just a small fraction of things that show God's amazing power. Remember, God's power is incomprehensible, greater than anything that we could ever imagine. And so you see what this verse in Romans is telling us about God? When we look at creation, there must be a creator. So you say, Mr. Brandon, how does that make sense today in the real world, in my world? You see, when the world looks around, 
it is clear that someone had to have made the things that we see. Nothing could ever appear on its own. We know that there is a creator God because there is order in the world. There is no way, no how that we what we see in the world today is the result of a big bang. It is impossible to believe that. And if you have not heard about this before, one day you will because it is still being taught today. But we know what the Bible tells us. We know that the universe couldn't have possibly come to existence any other way. There had to be someone who was already there in the beginning. And that someone, that someone is the one and only true God, the eternal God who was, who is, and always will be. Thank you.